That's Nick. And that's Joseph. And today we're here to talk about Morbius, the seventh film directed by Daniel Espinosa, that uh, uh, a Swedish import I was once excited about. No longer. Oh. Uh, this much delayed film, this is supposed to come out in July of 2020. Uh, it's Two fi- years ago. Yeah, it's finally being released April 1st, 2022. A joke. Of- <laughs> Yes, courtesy Sorry. of Sony Pictures releasing. What's the director's name? Daniel Espinosa. But he's Swedish. He's Swedish. Uh, his breakthrough film, I think, was his third feature called Snabacash, uh, aka Easy Money, uh, starring Joel Kinnaman, which spawned, uh, I think, a trilogy and a TV series. Um, he immediately came to Hollywood and did Safe House in 2012 with Denzel Washington and Ryan Reynolds. Um, he did Child 44 with Numi Rapace and uh, Tom Hardy, which was a film I remember liking. It shouldn't be in English, but I did like that film. Uh, and then a film that uh, is an egregious ripoff of Ridley Scott's Alien, which is Life, uh, starring, again, Ryan Reynolds, Jake Gyllenhaal, Rebecca Ferguson, uh, and several others. And I know you did see that one, uh, but heretofore, that was his last one. Uh, back in the, the Snabacash days, he was going to remake Yan Troll's The Emigrants, uh, and I feel like he probably shouldn't. Well, we had to pay to watch this because we couldn't get to the screener. Well, the screening... So it's always telling when a major studio film, the when the all-media screening is scheduled the Wednesday before during the morning. That means they don't want people to be able to come to it. So we couldn't go. Because you, so you couldn't fit it in. We did pay to see it at the Grove. Mm-hmm. So the highlight of that was we got to eat at the Cheesecake Factory. This is true. <laughs> Um, it's been a while since I've, again... Oh, did I put my leftovers in the refrigerator? I don't know. Uh, it's been a while since I, um, again, paid to see a film in the theater, but oh my God, the amount of previews. Well, can we talk about that? There were 30 minutes worth of trailers. Is that how long it was? Yes, I timed it. 30 minutes. That doesn't include Nicole Kidman talking about AMC. 30 minutes of trailers. So the and only Maria, tra- Ma- Maria Menounos and who, whoever else I had to sit through. Yeah. Um, Although they did have two YouTube film reviewers doing oh, commercials. Mm-hmm. One of whom I know. So I feel like we should be... They wouldn't let us because we can't be fake like that. I don't <laughs> think. No. Well, I know I couldn't. I'm, I'm not going to sit there and act to be excited about <sighs> the secrets of Dumbledore. Sorry. Well, so the only trailer I thought that is like a must-see is the Jordan Peele film Nope. In the Northman. Oh, in the Northman. But I'm more excited about Nope. Yeah, Nope will be fun, I'm sure. And then the new Doctor Strange movie. That shit look... The name of it is confusing. I'm so tired of multiverse. Something about the metaverse. The multiverse. Is it the multiverse? Yes. But just watching the trailer, I was like, I'm already confused. Sure. And I like some of the people in that. I like, you know, I'm a, a forever fan of Sam Raimi, even though I don't really like his first three Spider-Man films. Uh, but, you know, Drag Me to Hell and the original Evil Dead. You know, a Dark Man. Which, speaking of which, the tone of Morbius, I think, should have been like Sam Raimi's Dark Man. Okay, the basic story of Morbius. I'm not familiar with the comic book character. Okay, Jared Leto plays um, a character named Michael Morbius? Doctor. Dr. Michael Morbius. He is a... He's a doctor. I don't know if he's a PhD or a medical doctor, but... He, He's the world's leading expert in bloodborne pathogens. Right. He also has a disease affecting his blood, apparently, which has caused him to be very ill and um, physically disabled. So he walks with crutches. And we find out when he was a little kid, he was sent to like a medical facility to live, like, like a specialty hospital. In Greece. And it was there he met a guy named Lucius. Mm-hmm. Lucian. Lucian. That makes me think of that video of Taraji saying, like, I gotta put me first, Lucius. just I gotta put me first. Because that's what he's doing. This is what he's doing, yeah. Uh, he, Cookie's fortune. Oh my god. <laughs> Morbius, as a kid, meets this other kid named Lucian and immediately nicknames him Milo. So throughout the film, we call this kid Milo. So it's Morbius and Milo, all crippled in this hospital, when one day... Um, Morbius fixes a machine and the head of the hospital is like, you're a genius. I'm going to get you into the school for gifted students. And then we fast forward 25 years. And then that doctor is played by Jared Harris. And we see that Jared Leto is now like um, a very successful research scientist and is being presented a Nobel Prize. Like he's been, this is, we need to talk about that. I'll save it. Okay. 
his mission in life is to find a cure for this disease he and his best friend Milo have. But in the process, he's developed artificial blood. Mm -hmm. And this artificial blood is being used, up, it sounds like, around the world. Mm -hmm. And it's blue. And it's blue, which is important. Okay. His research to find a cure has led him to um, do research on bats because these bats contain some anticoagulant. And Vampire some bats. Whatever. And of course, like every other movie like this, like Spider-Man and every other character that turns into half of something, this fool decides to take his little serum, his little antidote, and give it to himself. And effectively, he turns into a vampire. Okay. But so, the, and the reason he, do, he does that on a lab rat first, on a little mouse... But that doesn't turn into a, a vampiric. Well, we don't rodent. know. Like, well, we don't know what it does. We just see that it. It's one of many plot holes. There's so many things. Anyway. Anyway. So, Morbius gives him the anti himself the antidote, and he turns into a vampire, and he thinks he kills like a bunch of people. Well, he does. <laughs> He does, but then he says he didn't. I was confused by that. The writing is crazy. The writing, the writing's terrible, but... Um... We need to finish the story, though. So, he comes... Now, because Morbius has killed all these people and the police are looking for him, he's kind of in hiding when Milo, who is a super rich guy and is funding, partially funding Morbius' work, he goes to visit him and sees, like, oh, shit, because... Before um, Jared Leto takes the antidote, he's all scrawny and sickly looking. And after he takes it, now he looks like hot Jesus. So when Milo shows up, hey, or okay, Milo is like, or, well, who? Well, I kept thinking Jennifer Connelly, but then you brought up somebody better. Well, no. He looks hot. He's muscular and ripped with the long hair, but he is painted. So I thought he looks like Courtney Cox. He does. But anyway, he looks great. He looks like Jared Leto. So when Milo shows up, he's like, oh, you look really good and you're walking without crutches. I want what you have. And Morbius says, no, because I'm like a monster. I'm not doing this to you. But of course, Milo breaks into the lab, takes it. And now he is this vampire, but he's not interested in being good. He wants to be bad. So the bulk of the film is like Morbius trying to stop Milo. Obviously, he does. In the process, he ends up... So there's another doctor who Morbius works with named... <laughs> Her name is crazy. Martine Bancroft. <laughs> like, okay. Played by Adria Arjona. A beautiful woman. She's very beautiful. Strikingly beautiful in a way that's like... Doctor? Okay. No, we shouldn't say that. Well, it, she's too young to be... Yeah, Doogie she, Hauser. The way that... <laughs> The way that we first meet her and the way that she's being ex things are being mansplained to her. It made well, we need to like get into she's that. She's at least a resident. We need to get into that. But anyway, yes, Morbius defeats Milo. In the process, though, he ends up biting Martine. Is that her name? Yeah. Yeah. Is the cat out? No, she's... This bitch is out. You locked her up and she is, she's right here. There she is. Oh, okay, well... She's broken out again. Okay. Wow. Okay. In the process, he bites Martine, and now she's a vampire, I guess. The end. Then there's an after credit where we're introduced to Michael Keaton's character in Spider-Man, whose name is Adrian Toomes. Mm -hmm. And AKA, there's some sequence where... Oh, A.K.A. Vulture. Vulture. And then we get, a, we get two after credit scenes, which sort of play like maybe Vulture and Morbius are going to um, start like a... Avengers type thing, the end. With villains, yeah. With villains. Mm -hmm. Okay, what do you want to say? Oh, this was a chore to sit through. Yes. And for more that ways than one. One, I don't like Jared Leto as oh. an actor or a human. Really. What did he do to you? Oh, he's so pretentious. But I, I mean... I can't stand listening to him. And then that whole house of Gucci, uh, th that shit show performance, <laughs> which people actually nominated him for things in which to me is crazy. Um... Yeah, that I, I don't I don't really care for Matt Smith usually either. Who's that? That is Milo Lucian. Oh. Doctor Who. He's Doctor Who? He was. He's, he's that old? Yeah. Oh, he looks young to me. He yeah, but he's not that old. But I mean oh. this was in the past decade. Oh. Uh I'm trying to think you we reviewed something else with him, but keep going. She might need to um, I think that 
you need to realize who it was written by. It's the it's the screenwriting team Burke Sharpless and Matt Sazama, uh, who are credited for Gods of Egypt, um, The Last Witch Hunter. Is that with Sigourney Weaver? Gods of Egypt? No, that's oh. Exodus: Gods and Kings. That's a very similar title. Gods of Egypt is a terrible film. Uh, I don't think Exodus is much better. Uh, as I was saying, The Last Witch Hunter with Vin Diesel and um, Dracula Untold, which is probably the best of all of these. Can I just go through my notes? Uh, yeah. The opening of the film is Morbius flies to Costa Rica, the Costa Rica project. Cerro de la Muerte, Muerte which is Hill of Death. And literally lands his helicopter on this like edge of a cliff. Mm -hmm. And then, oh my God, now the cat is, anyway. Lands this helicopter to go into this cave and everyone on the helicopter who flew him there seem to be locals and they're all afraid. And then... Morbius cuts his hand, puts it up to the cave, and then a million bats fly out. And damn near kill all the people who flew here. Yeah, it's there. like you can let them get in the Which was very confusing because... Explain to them. Right. Because but, Morbius acts like he's very... Like he's altruistic and he doesn't want to hurt people. But then the very opening is him putting people's lives in danger. But anyway, the guy who's flying the helicopter, I thought that was Kevin Costner. It's not. Didn't he look like him? Sure, but it's not. Uh, and then he pilfers a bunch of these bats and takes them back to New York, where he has them is in this wind tunnel. Type. In his lab, he has what like an aqua like a terrarium type yeah. thing. It's very fancy, and these bats are in there for the entire movie, flying in circles, flying like in a Mobius strip. And I wrote down. I know these bats are tired of flying. Yeah, like they need to rest somewhere too, <laughs> and there's nowhere for them to land, and there's no, no bat shit. That there's no for the, yeah, there's no for them to hang. And what are they eating? I have so many eating? questions. Anyway. Okay, when Morbius is a little kid in this hospital, his little buddy Milo is like they're on like these dialysis machines. Mm -hmm. And the scene where Milo his the, his machine stops working, so Milo like dies kind of. Like he slumps over. And Morbius is like, nurse, nurse, he, like he dies kind of. He kind of dies. I don't know. And then Morbius is yelling for a nurse and no one comes because it's been three seconds. Mm -hmm. So Morbius busts open the machine and takes the spring from a ballpoint pen and fixes something. And then within like three seconds, Milo is like revived. Mm -hmm. That was some bullshit. And then the next scene is the head doctor saying, you're a genius. You have a gift. There are people who spend years develop developing this machine and you fixed it with a spring. Like Elizabeth Holmes. <laughs> that was so stupid. Anyway, the next thing you know, it's uh, 25 years later uh, and Jared Leto is apparently 35. He uh, looks good. Because his character is supposed to look sickly and then he turns into Jared Leto. I mean, he's, he's using those collagen peptides, I guess. Yeah, glowing. Uh, we're not going to act like he doesn't look great. but He's fine. He's, he, just, he just <laughs> annoys me. When we see them as adults, the way they're acting and how annoyed I was already by this movie at that point, I thought the only way that this would be better is if Milo and Morbius hook up. But they don't. There is an underlying tension between them because um, Milo is supremely jealous, it seems, of uh, Martin Bancroft. Oh, can we talk about Martine? Because when we're first introduced to her, it's at the hospital where Morbius and Martine work. Oh, side note... We're made to understand that the artificial blood that Morbius has invented is like used universally. Like, because we see a paramedic or an EMT bag from an ambulance and it has the artificial blood supply in it. Like it's stock. Yeah. Like yeah. how every bag has Narcan, every bag has yeah. blue shit. And then, oh my God, there are two detectives working on the case of all the dead people. And one of them is played by Tyrese. I saw his head coming through the shadows and I'm like, that's Tyrese. And you go, ugh. Uh. I wrote down why Tyrese. If you're trying to make us, I can't stand. As much as you can't stand Jared Leto, I can't stand Tyrese. And like to cast him in a movie is like, you clearly aren't making a serious movie then. I, but D Baby Boy by John Singleton. It was 30 it, years ago. But that's a good but, film. So there's something. Uh, he's playing a character named Simon Stroud and his cohort, Agent Rodriguez, is played by Al Madrigal. Anyway, Tyrese tells Morbius like, oh, I know who you are and I want to thank you because your artificial blood saved me back when I was in, like, in Afghanistan. In, in Afghanistan. So that means that for years and years and years, this thing he created has been used globally, mm -hmm. universally. So one, why is he just not getting the Nobel Prize? Two, shouldn't Morbius be super rich? So what you're trying to say is this really is a film about patents. 
Then when we're at the hospital with Martine, when we first meet her, the way Morbius is describing his research to Martine is like, is she meeting you for the first time? He's talking to her, mansplaining to her what he's doing. I thought that was terrible. That, but so that leads to him experimenting on himself has to happen in international waters. Oh my God. <laughs> then the scene where he explains how all this has to happen is like, it has to be in international waters and... <laughs> It's so stupid. So he's on a boat, a.k.a. much like uh, the Demeter where Dracula comes from Transylvania, which it must be an homage to that. But I will say, I do like, when we watch like graphic novel type movies, you know, I hate when the characters don't have real powers, like Batman. Or who's that one? Uh, like Jeremy Renner. Iron Man. Or Iron Man, or... The, Where they don't have powers, they have money. Yeah. That annoys the shit out of me. Sure. So I did like that Morbius has powers. And I thought the scene on the boat while it was was ridiculous. That was a fun sequence of him discovering that he has these powers and then but, he, he kills everyone But on then the boat. like viciously slaughters everyone in this PG-13 right. film. Right, right, right. Okay, so then when Milo goes back... To, to the lab to try to find Morbius. Morbius is doing a test on himself because he realizes that he has to have blood in order to survive as this like vampire-like creature and artificial blood works, but it's like he's realizing that every as the days go by, it works less and less and he's going to have to start using real blood. So he's locked himself in a thing to test it when Milo shows up and Morbius is in bad shape. And Milo's like, how can I help you? And fucking Morbius draws in blood, the word blood on this, like, like he's in this, like, glass cell. He writes the word blood in bl his own blood, I guess. Backwards. Backwards. So that Milo and, can read it. And then he punctuates it with, like, an underline. That was terrible. That was terrible. There is a lot of this movie that's really terrible. I think the tone also is, is pretty bad because they're trying to be comic uh, in, in a lot, like comedic in a lot of ways, especially with Matt Smith once he starts to like feel himself. Uh, that is, is all kinds of off. And also, um, bes besides it having really great production design, and they, they're trying to give Bill Nye, or he looks like Bill Nye to me when Matt Smith is doing that, when his face oh, is sure. changing. That was my next note, that the tone is all over the place. I don't understand why there's a slightly comedic tone that seems so out of place when it does pop up. Then I wrote down that this would be like, this movie felt like if Tyler Perry had directed Interview with a Vampire. Like, it just is so all over the place, which is a shame because I think this could have been a really like eerie, like villain Marvel movie. Sure. Like, I think Venom... I don't think those films are great either, but they do a better job of that, of balancing that tone, maybe? I don't know. Because uh, Jared Leto's taking himself very seriously as he is in this very to do. silly, poorly written movie. Um, I did think of Interview with the Vampire because that's also a considerable template, if you will, where you have Louis and Lestat on opposite sides of wanting to kill humans to survive or not. Okay, I hate... I, I, I think it's well made. Like, the production quality is high. I think the special effects look great. But I hated the effects when Milo or Morbius are traveling at high rates of speed. Mm -hmm. Because whatever they're wearing, it, like, trails behind them in that color. Like ink. So, like ink. Like ink and water. Like, like when an octopus shoots ink and water. So when m there's a point where Morbius is in jail and he's wearing an orange jumpsuit. So there's a large segment where he's running around in orange and you see this orange behind him. I hated that. That just seemed like such a stupid flourish. Um, there's one point where Morbius is like manhandling someone and they're like afraid. I don't know who it was, but then they're, the person says, who are you? And mm -hmm. he says, I am Venom. Mm -hmm. Because we have to loop it back into this universe. Just like we have the obligatory after credit sequence we're all supposed to be expected to sit through where we get some kind of Easter egg morsel about how this is going to be tied into something else. There's a point where Martine is like in the same room as Morbius while he's working and she's like playing with her cat. And she cuts her finger on the cat food and the, drug, the blood drops on the floor. And of course Morbius smells it and he starts getting like, he has this primal response. And then he calms himself down and he explains to her. And, you know, she apologizes, like, I'm sorry. And she's asking him what it feels like when he smells the blood. And I wrote down, 
what would happen if she were on her period? <laughs> then my next note is, the only character in this movie who, who had any sense was that damn cat. Because the minute that blood dropped and Morbius started acting funny, that cat ran. <laughs> It did come back though and was meowing. It came back for but its the, food. But the way he acted is like, you better take care of that. Like, what, like she needs to cauterize it. Like, okay, like, another big plot point is Morbius keeps saying the artificial blood's not working and I'm not gonna like kill humans to get blood like Milo's doing. So I'm gonna have to die. And he even prepares um, a serum that will kill Milo and then he makes a second one implying to Martine that it's for him. But... He drinks real blood, like donated blood, like bags, because he has a huge supply in his lab of real blood and artificial blood. And at one point he does drink real blood and it works like the Dickens. Mm -hmm. So I don't understand why his character just doesn't say like, because there are, there are lots of vampire movies where the vampire will just drink like blood from things that are already dead mm -hmm. or animals. Mm -hmm. And then it just isn't as good, but they do it. Mm -hmm. And this character demonstrates he can do that. So why does he keep saying, oh, I, I guess I got to die? Like, I don't know, because uh, we have to have some kind of moral high ground, I guess, from which to judge him. But My final note is, how are two people who have spent their entire life on crutches, be barely being able to walk, so adept at all this physicality? Well, like, that, instantly. Well, that's what... So he... he becomes, There's no training. Well... That and even Spider Man had to get some training, and that was a young, healthy man. <laughs> well, just like how he becomes the half vampire creature, and all of a sudden he has abs and pecs. And it's like, well, I think another misstep is yes, Jared Leto is like probably, I don't think he was the best choice for this, but also like, I think it's like, why hire someone who looks like sexy Dracula? <laughs> I know we already had Luke Evans for that, didn't we? It just seems so weird. Like, and then poor Milo, that poor actor, because <laughs> because. You know, we see Jared Leto turn from the sickly looking pale thing to like Jared Leto, all buff. And then Milo, he looks rough. And then when he changes, that face is still cracked. It's just that now his, he can walk. And I just thought like, oh, poor, poor guy. Matt Smith. I guess I'd be mad too <laughs> if I look like that. Um, and my best friend looks like Jared Leto. Who looks like, anyway. Uh, the poster art. Keeps, it, I kept thinking as I've seen it all over Los Angeles, reminds me of uh, the Warcraft poster, oh, which you'll have to pull up. I'll have to put it up. This review is very long. <sighs> it's fine. It was shot by uh, Oliver Wood, who uh, did Born Ultimatum as, long, as well as many uh, other of Daniel Espinosa's films. And he uses the same uh, composer, John Ekstrand, uh, Ekstrad. And it's, again, the how it looks and how it sounds, all of that's great. It's just so stupid. I, I can't even say it's like enjoyable. There's just, there are so many. There, there's a moment where uh, Morbius is first fleeing from the police when they're when they're on to him because his coworker nurse is found <laughs> drained in the hallway, which we find out was killed by Milo. Milo. But he just <laughs> leaves her there like my god, and he he like flies up thirty flights to oh. the top of this building, and Tyrese makes this policeman stop shooting. And he's like meet me at the top, and then he's immediately up there. That was crazy. Yes. That scene confused the hell out of me. And then Tyrese has this white mark on his neck that looks like somebody had tried to slit his throat. I think someone probably did try to slit his throat in real life. So I don't know if they're... I think it's a real scar. Oh, well, Maybe? I or no, know. maybe it's to show why he needed a blood transfusion. Again, there's so many little things that I just don't think make sense. I don't know. I, I didn't enjoy... I wasn't expecting to enjoy it. Uh, but, yeah. We could be done. What would you give it? One... I would give it one and a half. If it were streaming on like a Wednesday night, if you don't have anything else to do. Well, you know, one is the loneliest number. <laughs> it's much, much worse than two. Are we done? Yeah. Bye.